he has compiled about three dozen images from a various amount of sources and friends that he has on Facebook and other connections and networks. And we're going to look at them here today. So not only are these multiple sources, different locations, different times of day, different days, everything. And we're going to bring this information for you guys to decide if it's real or not. Now, Bob, thanks a lot for joining us here at The Leak Project. It's been a while. How are you doing? Been doing okay. Uh, had some problems with my computer. Uh, finally got that taken care of. A lot of my friends on Facebook have lost their computers or their hard drives. So someone is, has been putting something into motion lately. Um, all of my friends are saying these photographs in from all around the world, different locations, different times of day. We have eight, eight of Nibiru's 13 planets in our skies right now. This blue one you're seeing right here, that's what I think the hope we call the blue Kachina. It's the only one that's nice and blue. Let's, if we could, show them this in full, um, full screen. Go ahead. Okay. Could you turn off your video and just leave your audio on for us? Yes. Uh, awesome. Turning that off right there. We love looking at your beautiful face, but this way we can have a... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. So what are we looking at here? If you could give all the details on these images, that'd be wonderful. Okay. The big white thing in the center, that's our sun. The blue thing is near our sun. I think that's what the Hopi in their ancient prophecies call the blue Kachina. Now in the Hopi prophecies, they say the blue Kachina will show up and two of their star brothers will come down and dance in a normal plaza so everyone can see them. Then they will take off their mask. That's first contact. No if, ands, or buts. Now, my Hopi contact says, the last time I asked him, that they had not been in contact with the Star Brothers, but more than likely they would keep it silent. So I'm not blaming him one bit. I remember reading that prophecy. I updated my, um, just my memory banks and read it the other day, and that's not a very old prophecy, actually. No, I, it's not. I was surprised. You know, Mother Shipton was the other... Prophet, prophetess that spoke a great deal, but everyone's been ignoring her. Uh, after the century goes, she speaks like a science professor of people living inside mountains with a huge amount of food, the ocean, the ocean floor coming up, being clean and a lot of other the earth crust going underneath the ocean. And she was the only prophetess that said very clearly, a silver ship came to view and spewed out men of like unknown. And these men that were not unlike, that were unknown to everyone, they intermingled with the humanity, the survivors, and they brought back the second sight. Second sight, I think that's magic. So. You think that could be like the watchers that have been referred to in ancient texts? It's a good chance because she was very clear in her thing or possibly the other guy that took over her writings. A silver ship came to view and spewed out men of like unknown. Nostradamus never spoke about that. None did either of the other prophets. Uh, Mother Shipton, she was born several years before Nostradamus and died several years before he died. So they must have known each other. You know, it's interesting. People forget all this stuff or they think it's all garbage, garbage, garbage. You know, our leaders, possibly with the ETs, working in connection, are making sure we are not seeing all this stuff very clearly in our skies every day. Like the image you have right there in front of you, the huge round thing that's being covered by something, but you can still see it's a huge round thing. So they're doing their best. 
but a number of the viewers around the planet have taken excellent photographs showing these things in our skies over their locations and they can't stop it. These things are growing larger. See, very clearly, Nibiru has 13 satellites, 13 planets, planetoids, moons, whatever. NASA imaged it back in 2008. So I've got the leaked images that show it very clearly. That, ha that this, this image you're looking at right now, yes, that one image you're looking at right now, that was given to me by a friend at NASA. That is, that's called a DSS image. That's exactly what you would see looking out through a telescope. That image first showed up on Worldwide Telescope and also on uh, Google Earth Sky back in 2007. I sent the image to a friend of mine in NASA, and he sent that image back to me. You have, now this one right here you're looking at, that one there is of Nibiru itself. NASA imaged that somehow, some way. Okay, and all those lines go out to 13 of its satellites. That was from 2008. NASA's been leaking stuff left and right. A lot of the NASA scientists, they don't agree with keeping it silent. So they've been deliberately leaking all this stuff. Now that next image right there, uh, right there, that was leaked in 2009. Now in the center, just to the right, you see Nemesis and its first six planets. As of 2009, the sixth planet, which everyone knows as Nibiru, with the red dot, was going to be 20 AUs away, astronomical units away from orbiting through our solar system. So they knew, they projected back in 2009 that we would not see it on December 21st, 2012. It has its own Oort cloud. Nemesis orbits around our solar system. Okay? Its Oort cloud every once in a while comes in contact with our Oort cloud around our solar system. And it shows up on a lot of NASA's information stuff. Now, Nemesis has a seventh planet. It's called Sedna. It's a brown, it's a dwarf planet. Now, in a lot of the astronomy programs, Sedna is showing up very clearly. It has a humongous orbit around our solar system. But what is it orbiting around? Because our sun is way down in the right-hand corner of the, of the orbit. And that's been shown in a YouTube movie TV show called Nemesis, Our Sun's Evil Twin, where this one scientist, he clearly shows Sedna's orbit around our solar system somehow, some way. Kind of amazing how we have all this information, but no one's talking about it. Or Now, that's a nice, that was a, of the, yes, that was caught just a couple days ago. Sun rising right there. There's Big Red, just off to the left. Big Red, uh, very clear. Big Red goes down through human history. The Holy Bible calls it Wormwood. The ancient Egyptians called it the Destroyer. Uh, the Hopi people call it the Red Kachina. And then over to the, over to the right, you'll see the blue object right there. That's the Blue Kachina. And those are being very clearly seen in the skies over Paris, France, just a couple of days ago on 10.04. Now, the news media is deliberately ignoring this stuff. Now, this image here shows a huge white planet that has a humongous hole in it, just like the Death Star. Um, I've caught other images up before. I've, I've sent them to you. Your, your listeners know about this thing. 
like I said, we have eight of the outermost plants of Nibiru in our orbit right now. Where did these images come from, Bob? Uh, Anthony Reed. A lot of times they don't tell me where they took them because they came off weather webcams. And as soon as they mention exactly what webcam, where, the webcam is turned off. Now look, 0929. That was another good image. Just a little bit further up, we have the, uh, it's blue, 0929F. Next one. Right there. You're seeing two planets. You see our sun up here in the very top. And then right below it, you see planet 13. Not that. It's in, no, not that. It's, it's just there. It's right below the sun, right there. It has all the stripes that Planet 13 has, so I knew exactly which one it was. Now, over here to the right of where your cursor is, right there, there's the white planet that has the humongous hole in it. Now, I think these were from Sharon or June, because June's been catching the best photographs. She's, she's hunting through all of the webcams every day, mostly the weather webcams. And these things are just showing up left and right. So they're out there. They're in our skies. The news media is completely ignoring them. Now you see a huge round glow in this image. I have a fear because that has been seen uh, my friend Whale, he's been getting a lot of images from the Middle East for years. And every once in a while, that huge glow shows up in the background. It's not our sun. I think that is Nemesis, the brown dwarf star. Because once every 26 million years, in its orbit around our solar system, it comes in very close. Now, in the, movie, in the TV show, Nemesis, our sun's evil twin, the scientist in there very clearly says that other people going back through time have found mass extinctions on a 26 million year cycle. Okay. All of the world's governments, every single one, including Russia, have been preparing for this since the 1955. This information leaked out through the Vatican because President Eisenhower met with the Nordics at Holloman Air Force Base in 1955. Pope Pius XII met personally with the Nordics in the Vatican Gardens. The Nordics were later turned out from leaks from the Vatican to be the Anunnaki. They are the Watchers. They are the Nephilim. The Anunnaki are very very powerful. They've been coming here for 450,000 years, if you believe anything Zachariah Sitchin said. Now, I could not find anything going back through the time to call Sat Sat that people were calling him a direct liar. He might have misinterpreted the stuff, the 14 tablets, but they never said he was a liar. Neither did the Vatican. Well, I just want to bring up something real quick, because a lot of people haven't heard of Mauro Bellino that have heard of Zachariah Sitchin. And Mauro yes. Bellino was a translator directly for the Vatican. And the guy speaks several languages. We've had him on the Leak Project before. He wrote a book called The Book Will Forever Change the Way You Look at the Bible. That's one of his many books. And he breaks down the Old Testament with he in Hebrew 
and a direct translation. And according to him, the Old Testament is almost identical to the stuff that Zachariah Sitchin has written about, a lot of stuff yes. that um, Gerald Clark has written about as well. So well, the there's other people that correlate what Sitchin had said. Right. The interesting part here, I had to research the holy heck out of this, as you well know. The last time it was here was during the Exodus. The Exodus was dated to 1613 B.C. Two brothers, Akmos and Kamos. But that isn't 26 million years. Well, I'm just saying the last time Nibiru was in our solar system was back during 1613 not to Nemesis, Nibiru, okay. 1558. Somewhere between there. Um, okay. The Nile Delta was ruled by the Hyksos. No ifs, ands, or buts. The Hyksos entered Egypt during the 12th Egyptian dynasty and were kicked out at the end of the 17th Egyptian dynasty. Akmos and his brother Kamos helped kick the Hyksos out. The Hyksos were, and still are, a Canaanite people. Akmos became Pharaoh in 1550, around 1550 BC. The Egyptian army harassed and pushed the Hyksos up near where Jerusalem is today. Okay, Akmos in Hebrew is very clear. It comes out to brother of Moses. Now, the slaves and the evildoers, the slaves were the Israelis, the Hebrews. The evildoers were all of the Egyptians who latched on to them and fled Egypt. Very clear. Ippower, an Egyptian scribe, detailed the Exodus. Very detailed account. It matches the Holy Bible left and right. So you know you have to you have to walk a I have to walk a very thin knife edge when I start mentioning anything about this. But yes, the Holy Bible, a lot of this stuff is all matching up with this. They don't want uh, our the powers that be don't want the general population to know about this because their hope is that there will be a very quick depopulation when this stuff happens. Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet, before he died in 1945, he was the first person to use the term pole shift. He had handmade maps of the United States drawn up showing what the United States and what the rest of the world would look like after this coming pole shift. The technical term is earth crust displacement. The earth's crust, just like in the movie 2012, will shift. Now we have eight of these things in our skies. Either it's because one of them is, has a really strong electromagnetic pull, gravitational pull, or all eight do. Now, Robert S. Harrington from the Naval Institute, before he died, he said Nibiru was orbiting around through our system clockwise from left to right. Everything in our solar system, except for Pluto, orbits counterclockwise. So, I have photographs going back to April 10th, 2015. All of these images in our skies were very small then, but you could clearly see them. Now they're very large in our skies. You can very clearly see them from the ground because the Earth is orbiting right towards them. Every government knows about this. They've all prepared for it, including the Vatican, 
Far be the Muslim religion, probably the Jewish religion. I mean, you know, Murphy's Law says they all have. That way when the dust settles, they can all pop back up and, hey, let's find new new people. We, we told you this stuff was coming, but it was all put down in little tiny bits and pieces. This has happened three times in human history. 2,900 B.C. with Chinese Emperor Yao. Believe it or not, he saw something coming out of the constellation of Yin, and it caused the oceans to top the high mountains of China. He had to send out four teams, and they had to find where north, south, east, and west was again. That was actually put in the movie 2012. Near the end of the film, you have the Chinese monk up in his monastery, and he feels the wind on his right side. He turns around, hears the oceans coming over the mountains. And he starts banging his gong, but it's way too late. The next time was Noah's flood, Zaya Sudra's flood. Noah went by many names. 12,900 plus minus years ago. The third time was during the Exodus. The ancient Greek island of Thera, we now call it Santorini, was erupting and exploded. Ippower's account of the slaves leaving Egypt, very clear. Volcanic ash was falling all over Egypt. The only volcano erupting then was the ancient Greek island of Thera. And they've recently dated it exactly to 1613 BC. We've been seeing a lot of this stuff for the first time in 3,000 years. We've never been taught to see our sun with something else next to it, but like that. We cannot see all these planets in our skies, left and right, left and right. You know, yes, you can see the planets at nighttime when they're little tiny dots, unless you have a high-powered telescope, and then you can physically see them. But people from the ground using their cameras, using their video cameras, using the weather webcams, using regular hotel webcams, shouldn't be able to see any of this stuff. But we're seeing all this stuff in our skies all around the planet. Russia is playing around with all kinds of evacuation stuff now. Well, the Russians started building 5,000 bomb shelters in and around Moscow several years ago. They're all set. They did that because Planet X was incoming. Now, I've never been able to figure out exactly which one is Planet X. Is it Nibiru, or is it one of these eight we're seeing in our skies right now? Uh, Project Camelot, this unknown guy, he came out with this stuff back in about the 80s, I think. He was a highly trained engineer building the deep underground military bases. He turned politician, and he outed the dumbs, as everyone should know them as, deep underground military bases, because Planet X was incoming. Now, that one photograph you got there is really good. Here, right there in the center, there's the white planet with a humongous hole in it. I have other images that clearly show it. Now the planet just up to its right, that's planet 13. It looks just like Jupiter, but we cannot see Jupiter from the ground during the day. And you're seeing it very clearly right there. The sun is up, the sun's way up here in the very top part. There's the white planet that has a huge hole, and there's planet 13. Okay, very clear. Now, some of, one of my 
friends caught planet 13 on 0708. Very clear in our skies. Not foggy like you're seeing it right now. If everyone on the ground could see these as you're seeing them right now, you would have everyone freaking out. No if, ands, or buts. So they're trying, with the best of their technology, they're trying to hide this stuff from your view, either by chemtrails or by other forms of advanced technology. Now, people have been seeing this stuff over in Europe since early this year. But all the papers, all the news, they're not saying anything about this stuff. Just recently, there was Channel 8 over in Las Vegas. And I got a hold of the person that was in charge. I mean, the person that was in charge of the station. She had received two videos showing stuff like you're looking at right now, and it all just went nowhere. I told her what was going on. I sent her several photographs, and she said she was going to pass it on to her other reporters. She had my email address. She had my phone number. Nothing has ever been found or heard of since. Last I was told by my friends down in South America, the United States and Canada are under a mass disinformation program where they will not talk about this stuff. People around our country, from the East Coast out here to Livermore, in California have been seeing these things in our skies all the way up to Canada and no one no one is talking about them they don't want to frighten people they don't want people to panic and neither do I I want people to get out there and get prepared something is coming up real soon the world's governments knew it. That's why they built the deep underground military bases. That's why they built the emergency seed vaults. That's why they built all the FEMA camps from the East Coast all the way up to Alaska. Each country has their own way of dealing with their surplus population, or better put, the survivors. The FEMA camps are showing up at Walmarts now, closed Walmarts. It's called prepositioning, where they're prepositioning a lot of military equipment all the way across the United States. Now, why are they doing that? Why don't they have GPSs or something? Well, my friend, each three accounts tell of massive amounts of rocks and meteors hitting the ground. That stuff will take out every satellite that we have. It will clear the skies. That's why a lot of people, before Barack Obama became president, had daydreams and nightmares of the hiding times. All the survivors were hiding from the black helicopters. See, the black helicopters, they have what they call a FLIR device underneath the nose. The FLIR device can pick up your body heat from miles away. So if you're out there in the country, what's left, if you're trying to hike out, if you're trying to drive away, if you're trying to ride a horse, they'd pick you up within seconds and know exactly where you are. Oh, sorry to interrupt real quick, Bob. I was just going to say I remember a couple years ago reading an article about how now national parks have multiple drones flying over them on a regular basis oh to yes. to prevent crime and i feel like mm -hmm. that's just another slap in people's face of getting rid of any type of uh what am i looking for exactly. here breaking out of the borg even for a exactly. weekend you can't do it without having drones flying over you is this person See? thinking like he's supposed to or should we assimilate right now Exactly. See the Georgia Guidestones, 1979, have a basic Ten Commandments on the three uh, granite slabs. 
And one of those commands is never allow the population to go above 500 million again. That's a 95% depopulation. Okay, your listeners don't want to listen to me. I'm just this guy sitting on a street corner with a sign saying the world's coming to an end. Listen to That's Pope awesome. John, listen to Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II. 1980, he went to a town over in Germany. He had a huge gathering of German Catholics, plus two reporters. They kept asking him about the third secret of Fatima. He finally gave up. He said that other popes before him would not talk about the third secret of Fatima because they didn't want the communists to start doing many coups, taking land. But what if it was in writing? that the world's oceans would cover almost every continent, killing millions within minutes. Why talk about it? He never, never repeated that warning before he died. He gave that warning just that one time, and that was it. He was almost assassinated in 1981. After he recovered, he went straight to the person's jail cell, and off the record, he talked to him over two hours. Pope Benedict, the first pope to retire in 600 years. He gets, all, he gets out of the Vatican, he goes on German radio shows, and he's blasting the Jesuits for their alien agenda. The Vatican knows what's coming down the pipe. Each one of our each one of our leaders, our presidents, everyone, they know what's coming down the pipe. They're keeping it very silent. Edgar Casey was very clear what he thought was going to happen. The entire West Coast was going to be gone in the movie 2012. 2012 gave too much information away, and they paid for it, from what I heard. Hollywood's been trying to warn us since the movie ID4, Independence Day, where they outed the fact that the president was out of the loop with the ETs in Area 51. Truman did that. Truman is the one that started MJ-12. Eisenhower, he met with three alien races back in 1954. And his hands were tied. He couldn't go public. He met with one race again in 1955. And he could not go public then either. When he got back to Washington, D.C., he demanded that no one ever talk about ETs, flying saucers, or anything in the White House again. He was enraged. He handed everything over to MJ-12. And then just as he's leaving, he gave the first televised account of his leaving office. And he spoke very cryptic to not trust the military and what they were doing with all this stuff. An excellent book by U.S. Army Colonel Philip Corso the day after Roswell, details it very clearly how three ships crashed in and around Roswell in 1947. We were just playing around with the Doppler radar systems then, and the radar system interfered with their flight stuff and caused them to crash. The Navy got one, the Army got one. <sighs> Air Force got the other. The Army was the only one to put all the stuff together. And Philip Corso was given that task of reverse engineering everything they had. He went around to all these different companies, and they did their best. 
and the army made a lot of money off this stuff. He talked about the one surviving ET that the army ship found. It stayed alive for a little while. They allowed it to play around with one of its undamaged ships and it phoned home. Colonel Corso said that the alien told them that they had bases on the dark side of our moon. NASA, the Apollo program, Apollo 17. As it was going around the dark side of the moon, it was contacted in English and was told to never return to the moon again. Officially, the Apollo program was canceled. Unofficially, it went all the way up to Apollo 20. Lucas Cantemberlo, an interesting Italian reporter, he has a website and he has all the pictures that they, that they were able to leak out showing Apollo 20. So we kept things very quiet for a long time. They don't want the humans to know about it. Well, either because they're afraid that just like with the War of the Worlds back in 1939, the radio show, you'd have just panicking left and right, killing each other. But that was another thing that the general is in charge of, Philip Corso. He told, basically told him to come up with a, a program which would educate the people in the United States about aliens and stuff where we wouldn't fear them anymore. And that's where we got all the different movies, the stories, the TV shows. Now, I grew up with Star Trek and then went on with Babylon 5. So I'm, I'm used to, okay, it's an alien ship, cool. Is he nasty or is he friendly? The Anunnaki, according to Pope Pius XII, he described them as a warrior race. Because he met with them personally. And all the other popes after him know just as much, if not more. Sorry for the music, but, you know, I'm in here in a Starbucks. Best Wi-Fi reception I can get. I was just recently on with another woman with her shows, uh, radio shows. And, you know, one of my friends is Scott. Uh, and I've been trying to look at some of his videos lately. And the videos are coming up more and more. They're getting better images. And they're not fake. None of this, and you, Rex, you've caught a couple of things which were not real. And okay, cool. You know, it, uh, I don't have super eyesight. Uh, I don't play around with any uh, Photoshop or anything. A couple of things were slipped past me, either deliberately or accidentally. And uh, but the 99% of the photographs I've been sending you, and you were really skeptical when we first started doing our shows way back. But I think these photographs have been showing you that we're actually seeing more and more and more in the skies. You know, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I wish I did. I seriously wish I did. I've been telling everyone to prepare as if they're going on a six-month backpacking trip. Can't tell you why I say that. Earth crust displacement. The Hopis described it very clearly as earthquake after earthquake after earthquake after earthquake. That will take out every bridge, every roadway around the planet. So you're going to have to hoof it. Nice pair of boots. Nice, you know, walking clothes, a good backpack, uh, dried foods. Uh, I kind of like the tuna. It comes in those nice aluminum little little bags now. Um, beef jerky. 
you know, something you can just munch on as you're walking or you can save it till a meal time of some type. Have to have some some way of defending yourself. I can't say what. You, know, you, you choose your own way. Um, because when everything's down, you can have humanity. They're going to come looking for what you have, so they can they can survive better than what they're doing. Uh, Native Americans. They have prophesied. They've had several dreams over the years saying everything west of the Rockies was gone and the white man was killing and raping and pillaging left and right. The United States, according to Edgar Cayce, is cut in half. The Great Lakes, because of the earth crust displacement, just drills a hole right down from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. And then you got the East Coast, or what's left of it. Now, you know, I hate to talk like this. I really do. I wish I could be positive. But when I've researched the holy heck out of this stuff, and I know what the ancient accounts, which still survive, said happened then. And here we have these things in our sky now. So is it going to be just as bad? Is it going to be less? How much of our leaders are going to help the survivors? Personally, I think that the FEMA camps are for the survivors as a workforce. The concentration camps that Germany had during World War II they just wanted people to die left and right as fast as they could. The FEMA camps, with all the backup food, with all the caskets that they had made and buried right underneath the front of them, they want a surviving workforce. FEMA started buying up these huge Max train, train cars several years ago. You've seen them on the railroad tracks with cars, trucks, they're two level. And they had huge openings on both sides. They had huge metal plates with holes, breathing holes, welded onto both sides. And several of my friends, which have seen them on sightings, just sitting there under guard, have been able to sneak up to them and look inside these things. And each friend said they had shackles welded or bolted on on the inside. Shackles. Handcuffs on a chain. Now, why in the hell would FEMA do that? I've got photographs of those. I've sent them to you. You've also found them yourself on your own research. Other people say there are other things I'm not even going to talk about, whether they're real or not. I just talk about things that I've seen in my research. Now, a friend of mine, she deals with people that have been abducted, abductees. And I asked her recently what, if anything, she could tell me what her people were telling her. And she's been talking about something called the Mandela Effect. M-A-N-D-E-L-A -E Effect. I haven't had a chance to research that part yet. But she says a lot of her abductees in hypnosis. Her name is Lori McDonald. So I'm quite sure you can look her up. She's on Facebook, Lori McDonald, L-O-U-R-I-M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. I've actually done a couple of shows of her, which I'm not going to really talk about because that will make me sound weirder. Um, things are going to be coming down real soon, my own opinion. With these things in our skies... With the Earth orbiting counterclockwise right towards them, 
with all the billions of dollars each country has paid for being prepared for this. They're not, they didn't do this on a whim. Okay? They did this so the elite will survive. In fact, the one guy who did the um, Project Camelot, I still have his, his exact posting. He said anyone else on the surface is on their own. Because you're going to have, just like which was accounted in all three accounts, a fire from the sky coming down, destroying everything that grew, water rushing in, washing things away, rocks coming down in huge amounts. Now, you know, the Egyptians barely survived it with their stone palaces. What do you think the average person with their light wood house is going to survive? It's going to, it's, it's going to devastate the entire planet. Okay? This isn't just going to come down over China, over Egypt. It's going to come down across the entire planet. Our leaders know that. I've been posting this stuff up on Facebook, the ancient accounts. And, it's, you know, I'm actually, survived my, I'm, I'm actually uh, surprised I'm still up that they haven't pulled me down. They have pulled my computers down. They've been pulling down a lot of other people's computers, too, just recently, within the last month. So I don't know what's going to go. I guess the best thing to say is just sit back and wait. You better be mobile, though, because when this stuff happens, not only will you have humanity looking for you, but you'll have every big animal that survives out there. They'll be looking for you, too because a lot of their food sources are going to be dead depending upon what happens and who survives and how many of them survive. This is going to be a huge reset button. The Earth will not be destroyed. This has happened three times before. We're still here. Each time a certain amount of humans do survive and they start all over again. The ETs, whomever they are, they're working with F1 this time. They've been shooting down asteroids and stuff as they're coming into our solar system. You know, too many things should have happened already. The remote viewers, they said everything should have been destroyed by June 1st, 2013. Nothing has happened yet. We had one asteroid come down, meteorite over Russia. And supposedly, a lot of people saw, thought they saw a spaceship right behind it. And they said it fired something and blew it up. So, I don't know. I'll, we, I'll, go I'll ahead. Hear, do you have any questions? I was just going to say, we certainly live in fascinating times, Bob. And with all that's going on around us, I'm starting to wonder if our best bet is to not only be prepared for the worst, hope for the best, send out good energy, help your neighbor, smile at somebody that looks like they're having a bad day, and just the little things right now have got to be so important because if this is on the horizon and if we're going to see it in our lifetimes, certainly enjoy the time that you have because we are so blessed right now if you think about it. The access to things that we have Kings didn't have this kind of access a thousand years ago to right. communications and creature comforts. Now, at the same time, if you look at the other side of the coin, there's just as much evil lurking in the world with the way big pharma controls things, with the way these just dark, demonic organizations that have so much power and influence seem to put sweet poisons in just about everything they can get their tentacles into. And I was thinking about that today, you know. When you find out that there's basically Roundup in baby formula, I think to myself, how are these corporations not tried, you know, as in war criminals? I mean, this is an act of war on humanity, and these guys make billions and billions and billions of dollars, all intertwined in different levels of the system. I mean, that is treason 
in my opinion, getting away with poisoning people of all ages. And uh, that's my rant for the day. So I just wanted to get that 30-second okay. expression out there. Hello! Yeah, well, a pope back in the 1180s, he started the Templars and the Hospitallers. And he made them put this eight-pointed cross on their chest. That eight-pointed cross is the mark of Cain. Cain and Abel. That's the mark of Cain. The Templars and the Hospitallers started the Rosicrucians, the Illuminati, and the Freemasons. And you can find one of each of these three in every kingdom, major family. The United States was started by George Washington, a 33rd order Freemason. Several United States presidents were Freemasons. They're in every kingdom around the planet.